is that we provide the certifications. Uh, green Project Management and Microsoft Project. Right now, most of the activity is in retrofitting. Um, the construction that you're finding in GTA tends to be residential uh, and tends to be the smaller piece of the pie. Um, the, the construction that's going on as far as lead tends to be retrofitting current buildings. Uh, anything from making them more energy efficient to changing their, their energy sources to what's called skinning a building, which would be taking an old building and putting a, a facade around it, whether it's glass or another material to make it more energy efficient. Um, that tends to be where most of the activity is in green building and design. Um, primary players in this marketplace are real estate developers and of course engineering firms. Uh, primary concerns in this area tend to be energy efficiency. So whether it's retrofitting your building or building a new space, uh, typically what they're focused on is making it more. Um, I, don't know how, I, I don't have a statistic on how many of them are specifically in clean tech versus corporate sustainability. 95% uh, of our attendees are business people and they range anywhere from startup entrepreneurs to the large multinationals. And I would say probably 50-50 as far as uh, half, of, half of those are in some sort of green business per se, one of these areas, and half of them tend to be in other types of companies that are, are interested in learning about the topic or doing business with green companies or hiring someone, whether it's a corporate sustainability practitioner or otherwise, um, to um, the cost of, of ramping up things like solar. Um, so there, there are sort of uh, pushes and pulls on, on both sides, so to speak, uh, but it is a high profile, high growth area. Um, Implementation and project management is, is a key area that we've seen a lot of growth in as far as employment opportunities. So all of these projects, when whether it's a, a rooftop development on, on a housing project or it's a huge solar farm somewhere or windmills that need to go up in northern Ontario, uh, someone needs to manage that project and understand uh, the technical aspects of it. Someone needs to sell the project and understand what they're selling. So there is a need for both uh, the engineering background as well as the interpersonal and other skill sets or the soft skills um, to go with that background. Um, so there's certainly a lot, a lot of opportunities that we've seen in renewable energy. In engineering background, whether it's industrial, mechanical, civil, architectural, but you get foundations on lead AP, you get foundations on carbon footprint, measuring carbon gas, carbon gas emissions, Top and track together with green project management, where you will get uh, 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 certification, register certification exams for from a PMP, and you get Microsoft Project, which is a tool you need to manage projects. You put all of that together, and you can create almost your own job. Yeah, and in many cases, I know there's some people like someone said that one of the speakers like, okay, so I'm not going to work for a big company. I want to start one or two man firm, like my specialty, but. In small, medium-sized business, you have to have network. You have to have connections. So, in some cases, it's work as a collaborative. Do a subcontract for somebody, and in that six months, you see is that right for you? You might change. You might network. I'm looking for people who know our absorption chillers. We don't use them here, but they use them in Asia. They use them in India. But now we're looking at applying them here because we're looking at waste heat recovery. Canada never used to do combined heat and power. Europe does it. Like, places where they pay 25 cents for electricity when we only pay 8 cents. They were doing many of these things. So many of the things that you've done in your countries are actually applicable here. And, and we can learn from each other. That's the exchange we What we have done in, uh, for our New to Canada website, which is, looks like this. I don't know how many of you Okay, new to Canada at Humber.ca. Can you get that? There you go. <laughs> new to Canada.ca. Every time you visit the website, we are able to, to look at data on how many people actually visited our website per month, per week, per day, per hour. So we know that on average, over the last four months, 828. Uh, people come to our website. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Kevin McMullen. I'm the Recruitment and Promotions Officer for the GTA for Professions North.
Professions North is a bridging program, okay? We are managed by Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario. We're funded by the Ontario government, so there are no costs for any of our services. Let me ask you a question. How many people have been to Northern Ontario? What's, where have you been? What city? Good, yes, that's one. Kirkland Lake. Kirkland Lake, yeah. Okay. Mine yeah. Is I went to Kid Garden. Kid Garden doesn't count. I too far south. It's too far. <laughs> <laughs> Not far enough north. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Sudbury is one of the cities that are, that are participating in this project. We also work with four other cities. So we work with Timmins, North Bay, Sault Ste. Marie, and Thunder Bay, in addition to Sudbury. And we look for employment opportunities for you in each of those five cities. There are employment opportunities in those cities because people who are new to Canada are not going to Northern Ontario. They're coming to Toronto, or they're going to Montreal, or they're going to Vancouver, or maybe Calgary and Edmonton. They don't go to Timmins, and they don't go to Sudbury, not many of them anyway. So the competition for jobs is not as great, and they're looking for people with skills and experience like yours. The program is a little bit different because it's located in a headquartered in Sudbury at Laurentian University, so all of our services are online. You work at your own speed, and there's no cost, as I said, to our services, so it's a little bit different than what you might be used to. Each of the cities who are partnered with us have employment service agencies like Skills for Change, and each of those employment service agencies in the five cities have connections with the employers in their community. They know where the jobs are. We have a matching database so that when we put your resume into the database, it matches you with job opportunities in those five cities. This is just a list of our customers, a lot of engineering companies, a lot of uh, owner operators. Basically, I would say maybe to extend of 80%, if you look, at least at, in Can uh, Canadian market, they're using our software, okay? Here in GTA area, big names like SNC, Hatch, Worley Parson, Can Do Energy, um, uh, Shaw, uh, and others are using our software to... Yep. Management can plug from here through the web, like www and then uh, address of that server, and they can look at all that data that has been developed in every uh, engineering tool, okay? So what is interesting, like if I, if I do a query looking for some uh, engineering object, like pump, and how can one, one uh, begin uh, working in general in the industry? So maybe not specifically at their company, but in the industry. And you would be surprised at some contacts someone has. So for example, I, I may not be recruiting at OPG, but I know that we have uh, contract service providers where we've given them large contracts to get some piece of work done. So I might then say, well, I'm not recruiting, and gee, you sound like a really good applicant, but the contractor that we, we're doing business with is looking for people. And so maybe that's a way for you to get in through the door is through through um, that third party, and then you know someone might connect you that way. But as hard as it is to do the research, make a cold call with someone who doesn't even know you, and to say, "Can I have a half hour of your time?" Um, it is very difficult, but it's probably the best way to actually build your network up. And if you need help, I would suggest that there's many organizations here, Triac being one of them, Skills for Change being another, who can really help you in terms of figuring out how to go about doing that. Um, that's probably one of the best ways to find a job. And I don't say that just for new immigrants, I say that for anybody breaking into the market. This is a very good question. Uh, the question that this gentleman asked was, I received an interview with an employer over the phone and then I followed up to write a thank you letter and I haven't heard back so what's the proper protocol when you haven't heard back from an employer what what do you do so the, the uh, first piece of advice I would give you is um, hopefully you were you, you had a scheduled appointment over the phone and if you did you would probably know who who the person is that you're speaking to and what their phone number is and if 
Um, if you don't get that information, make sure at the end of the phone call, you ask that question saying, number one, when will I hear back from you? Um, will I hear back either way, yes or no? And uh, what's your phone number? Are you my, gonna be my main contact for this, for this role? And so if you have their contact details and you haven't heard back, I, I think the general protocol should be to wait about two weeks. So if you haven't heard back from someone who gave you a phone interview in two weeks and they haven't sent you an email saying thanks but no thanks or you know we'd like to invite you in for another interview, um, two weeks is generally the protocol and you've done a good thing like it's a very nice touch that as soon as the interview is over over the phone you may have written them a letter or you may have sent them a quick email or, or that kind of thing and follow up through phone. That would be a good way to do it. And just say, look, I was, I was interviewed uh, about two weeks ago, and I'm not sure what the process is or what my status is. Can you please let me know? And even over the phone, provide your email address very slowly. The first group uh, is uh, May 1st, we get 30 people that will go through uh, that whole process. Um, 30 people will go and then get the training, academic training. Once you're selected, uh, uh, academic training, job preparation, internship, and permanent job. And the idea is not necessarily to focus in the placement. Uh, we'll be working with people and trying to find them permanent jobs. I mean, this is the, the goal, right, as opposed to... Uh, Sorry, how, how long did you say the placement was? Uh, eight weeks, minimum, minimum. It could be longer, depending, and it could be paid or unpaid. So we're working with some organizations, some partners that will be looking for paid uh, uh, internships and but in some cases you need the experience you will, you will be there is no linear path everybody has a different one and so you have to you know choose and pick from all these other options people uh, have the opportunity to do self-employment entrepreneurship we heard today uh, some comments about that however in the system there is no support uh, formal structured uh, structure support for entrepreneurs. Newcomers are inherently entrepreneurial. They take the risk, challenge, move the families, come here, and a lot of those skills are uh, fundamental when you want to start your own business or company, right? So that's a, one option. I think there is some uh, space there for innovation in terms of offerings that we can do for the, the requirements for the applicant is the, is the usual be resident, have work permit. Uh, have two years of uh, project management experience or related back home or in Canada, uh, and have your credential assessed, have the language a skill of eight, because this is an intense, intensive course. Uh, uh, so it's six courses in 14 weeks. You have to be at a level that you can perform.